In this week's vlog, I am going to talk you through two new purchases that have helped my bodybuilding. So those who follow me closely on Instagram would have seen, and you've have seen in some vlogs that I've been squatting on this. So this is a foam wedge, um, a yoga one made by these guys and it was like seven pounds over on Amazon. And I just wanted to try squatting on a wedge rather than using my squat shoes. Uh, main reason being uh, just to see what it was like uh, having a bit more freedom with my front foot. Uh, you're wearing my Vibram squatting with these kind of barefoot in, for instance and being able to like more so think pushing through my front toes and just see what difference that made. This actual uh, height of the wedge is also higher than the heel of my squat shoe and so it allowed a little bit more uh, ankle mobility or rather uh, yeah it gave me more mobility in my ankle so I could be a bit more upright get a bit more quad focus and after having tried this for a pretty decent stint of time I decided I wanted to invest in some proper kind of wedge squat wedge because unfortunately this is foam it's high density foam or I think that's what it's called but it does compress. So if you stand on it with load, it does compress and then it, it gets hard. So it, it does work. Um, it's just probably not the safest and best solution uh, because yeah, there's a reason we don't squat in running trainers because we don't want them to compress under load. We wanna put that load straight through the floor, um, through our body and that's the safest and that's gonna cause the most force and allow us to lift the best loads possible. And so I picked up some other ways and this is basically two like this so I've got one and then I've got another one and the good thing with having them separate like this is now rather than being like this straight up there I can angle them so as you guys know when you squat you don't squat with your feet straight forward you squat with them slightly pointing out so using these I can angle them rather than being straight I can angle it slightly out so it, this is all in line with my foot and that should allow me to be able to push through it more properly and because it's metal it's very sturdy so there's no compression and if you look at this one versus this one you can see the height is even greater on this so it's quite nice to mostly have this as a bit of a, an experiment. I got them from Corrupt Fitness and they were a reasonable price. I have seen the Prime Solo Wedge uh, ones, which I think are great. Um, and I think they would be the ideal ones to have purchased, but they're very expensive and uh, shipping international would have been not great. So the nice thing that this is now gonna give me and uh, having used them, I'm definitely weaker using them, what the extra heel height will do will make, again, like I said, I'll be more upright, uh, my knees will travel more forward, it will be more quad isolation-like uh, because I'm get just putting more through the knees and it's taking less, from, it's putting less onto my posterior chain and the glutes and things like this and they're staying more under me. So that's pretty cool, uh, but it will make it tougher for the quads. So I was noticeably weaker transitioning from squat shoes to the wedge and then even more to those wedge. Uh, solo wedges, uh, which yeah, I wasn't necessarily accounting for and that made my performance not the best uh, in my last session So I'll just have to react uh, with that and that brings me to like a question that gets asked quite often Should I change my exercise mid mesocycle? And I think if it's a big compound lift absolutely not if it's an isolation lift I don't think that's such an issue, but a big compound lift. No, and I, I, I basically did vary it um, and that brings me to uh, what I think the different heights could be for squats and that we know we have like you can vary your width your stance of squatting that can be a variation you can change the tempo add a pause you could be high bar low bar I wouldn't do low bar for hypertrophy generally another addition could be heels so I'd always had a bit of a kind of you could have flats and then you could have your squat shoes but now you could even have your flats, then your squat shoes, and then you could have the wedge, and you could use the wedge for a period of time. And the, the great thing, wedges are great because if you're a PT, you can use them with multiple clients, uh, but they're also just great. You can put them in your gym bag and have those. And I, I don't think 
they're something for everyone they're certainly not necessary and it's more because i'm just a geek about this sort of thing and like investing into my hobby uh, so yeah i'll be i'll be squatting with that for a period of time see how i get on uh, yeah it should allow people to get deeper um, have more focus on the quads keep their back more upright and be less limited by the ankle mobility the good thing is with uh, one that is a bit higher is you could put your foot like just stand as high as up to here and you just get a little bit of extra mobility or you could stand all the way to the back which is what I did which gives you a lot of extra mobility puts a lot more onto the quad and makes it very challenging whereas if you have a squat shoe you're obviously just you have a standard and you, you can't go up or down so it's quite nice to have that but uh, squat shoes have big benefits in terms of being able to be used on different machines you couldn't use this on a leg press for example so yeah that's why I invested in uh, the corrupt wedge So guys, it's a scorcher. It's really hot this week in the UK. We have had a heat wave. So in London right now, 30 degrees outside. It's gonna get up to 31 degrees. And it's just, just sun, sun, sun the whole way through. Come on. And uh, for that reason, it's not really an issue um, generally, apart from training from home. So that's not as comfortable. It's very sweaty. Uh, I, as well, training twice per day makes me particularly annoyed because I have to really make sure to clean myself after both sessions and then I also shower at the end of the day and that brings me to that point point. and I've done a vlog before on like my sleep hygiene practices and I take you through that entire thing and now there is a presentation on the members site all about sleep and how to kind of use your sleep routine and schedule to best get the best sleep. Uh, and one of the issues is ideally you want your room like a cave. So that's cool, dark, and quiet. Now, some of those things might not be achievable at particular times. Like I live right by a railway track. So hear it all the time. If I open this kind of door right here, you just, you just hear it, it's super loud. Uh, and unfortunately when it's hot, that means windows need to be open. I'm hot year round, so I have the windows open year round. So that's one issue. And then the other issue is that it's really hot right now. Uh, and one of the things that we need to happen to get to sleep is our core body temperature needs to come down. And that can be really difficult when it's so hot, cool, dark, like get your room like a cave. Um, so you can manufacture it though. And one of the things I've done and purchased recently, and that is what this vlog is kind of about, is introducing some things, just some new little gadgets and uh, things that I've got in my life. Um, and that is this fan. And basically I had a chat with uh, Greg, my man, Greg Potter, and just had a to and fro of like, what can you get to cool down? And there are, I think there's something called an Ula um, and there's some like uh, things you can put on your bed sheets and you can control the temperature of those, but they're very, very expensive um, and not something to take lightly. And so I had the issue of being hot, but also it was noisy outside. So I got a fan and in fact, the fan is on now. So I don't know if the noise has been really bad, but if I turn it up, it blow my hair, kind of. Uh, so yeah, the fan is on right now. You can barely hear it, but at night, it just creates enough white noise in the background because I have it right next to me. To somewhat block out outside, it's not loud enough to block out outside, but it also helps keep me cool. I've had a different fan for a long time. It's like a tower and it rotated. That's the one I had in the previous vlog. Um, that one broke. And this one I think is much, much better. It's much quieter, so I may even be able to have it on during podcasts, which would be great because I get very hot during podcasts as well. But yeah, that, that's one of my purchases. And I just went for uh, Amazon and I looked for the best rated, best reviewed one on over on Amazon. This one's 150 quid and I really like it and it works super well. So uh, yeah, if you're hot, if it's noisy outside, you wanna make your room more like a cave, then getting a fan can really help because it can help cool you down. It can act as some white noise and it's not gonna help with the darkness, but you can then hopefully wear an eye mask. Eye masks tend to make people hot, so the fan can help with that too. So, maybe pick up a fan. You fan of, are you, fan, are you, are you a fan of a fan? I'm a fan of a fan. Fan. And I think that's a wrap guys. The next big purchase, I think that we made is gonna be a, a house. And actually, I'm not joking, me and Charlotte have been looking at houses, so that might be interesting. Uh, but for now, our feed is in. As always, if you've enjoyed this, please do subscribe, do comment, do like, 
it all helps us big time and I'll catch you on the next episode.